Welcome to Sketchy. We take all the super complex stuff you need to learn and turn them into memorable visual stories packed full of everything you need to know on test day. Click the link in the corner or description to try for free for seven days. Now let's get to it. Now that we've gone through the differential diagnosis for acute dyspnea, it's time to focus on chronic dyspnea. Many of our old friends will make an appearance in this video. We're not through with heart failure or COPD just yet. Whereas acute dyspnea occurs over minutes to days, when you hear the word chronic, think of a time frame of months to years. Patients with chronic dyspnea present with shortness of breath that develops slowly and gradually. A slow sinking kind of feeling. Nope, even more sinking than just a day at the beach. So we're straight up heading underwater for this one. As always, before we get down to business, let's break down the differential into buckets. Since the vast majority of causes of chronic dyspnea are lung diseases, we'll need a slightly different system than the one you saw in our acute dyspnea DDX sketch. Therefore, let's segment the causes of chronic dyspnea into four categories, obstructive lung diseases, restrictive lung diseases, other lung diseases, and cardiovascular causes. We'll start with the obstructive lung diseases. This broad category encompasses processes that obstruct the movement of air out of the lungs. And whenever we say obstructive, just think about this boat of protesters, intent on obstructing the illegal fishing activity here at Blue Bloater Bay. Welp, it looks like one of the protesters has gotten a little too excited and has fallen overboard. Recognize him? He's our recurring sketchy symbol for asthma, embodying airway inflammation and hyper-responsiveness that results in reversible airflow obstruction hence the reversed pink hat he's wearing. Consider asthma in your patient with chronic dyspnea, especially if they have a history of atopy, such as atopic dermatitis, represented by those red spots on his clothes, and a specific trigger for their symptoms. If you suspect your patient has an obstructive lung disease, like asthma, order spirometry testing, which should show a classic obstructive flow volume loop pattern, represented by that scooped mound of sand hiding underneath the surface of the water. One thing to remember about asthma is that because it's characterized by reversible airflow obstruction, spirometry results may look normal when patients aren't having symptoms. In these cases, we have other tests that can help us make the diagnosis, which we'll talk about in a moment. On spirometry, patients will also have an FEV1 to FVC ratio less than 0.7, a characteristic finding seen in all obstructive lung diseases. Hence the name Spirito the 0.7 C's emblazoned on this obstructive boat. Kind of a small view for a group of Earth lovers. Just saying. 